Testing one, two. Okay, we're alive. I'm profoundly grateful to you to invite me here and make me part of your family and for you to set aside your time to hear what I'm have to talk about. I am grateful to you for that and thank you so much. I really appreciate that. So uh, today I'm here to talk about another developer. Since this is a developer conference, what I'm going to be talking about is, is really quite appropriate. I am working with the Omni Group in Seattle, Washington. And for those that aren't familiar with Omni, they make Omni Graffle, Omni Outliner, Omni Plan, Omni Focus, a series of high-end productivity applications. And they're a great example of how the insight of a single developer and their determination can change the direction of a platform. I got a feeling that what you're going to see today, you will be seeing a lot of over the next couple of years and you might even end up in your own applications. So I'm a firm believer in paddling out to where the wave is going to be and then surfing the wave. And right now I've paddled out to a certain spot and I got a feeling there's gonna be a wave coming and I wanted to share that with you. So you're seeing something that is in development but certain components of it are already shipping in the App Store and have been approved by Apple. So I'm going to be talking about Omni Automation. And it's from the Omni Group, is your official name, in Seattle, Washington. And so today, instead of me trying to set up iPads and trying to set up multiple different machines to do my demos, I recorded each demo on a device in high resolution video. So that way I can zoom certain parts of it and uh, highlight other areas. But every demo I'm going to show you today on the screen is real. None of this is fake. This is all actual things that are shipping today. So I have an iPad here and I just want to run this video and talk a little bit about it. So let me start that. I'm going to open up Omni Outliner, and I'm going to drag out, and this is iOS 11, I'm going to drag out an area for Safari, and I have open a grocery list website. This is a copy of uh, grocerylist.org. I'm going to tap an area. It asks to open something in Omni Outliner. It's showing me a JavaScript that it wants to run in Omni Outliner. I approve that, and it adds a group to my Omni Outliner document. I'm going to continue going back and forth with this web page and interact over here and add elements to the document. Let's add another category here, seafood. Approve. I can review the script. I approve it. And then once the categories have been added to the document, I can go through and select the items I want to add to my shopping list. This is typical Omni Outliner. For those that aren't used to Omni Outliner, it's a fantastic outlining program, just superior. And let's also add in some seafood. Have to eat salmon, gonna have some salmon. And tilapia, that's great. Okay, then I'm gonna run a script in the application to remove all the unchecked items. So I went from a web page to a shopping list on my phone. Because I'm using Omni Outliner and I use iCloud and I use Omnipresence, that document automatically gets added to my phone for me the moment it's saved. And I went from a web page to this. There was a lot of things happening there to make that so easy and transparent. Tapping something on a web page triggers an action in another app on iOS. Data is passed across, added to the document. Inside the document, I can manipulate that document using scripts. So what we're going to do today is review what Omni has done. 
their plants and their architecture so that you have a better insight of how this may affect your development future and how it might be something that you will be using soon. Okay, and so what's Omni Automation? Well, Omni Automation is about JavaScript and CSS and HTML5. We're used to these items working together wrapped in a web page. We've all seen JavaScript, CSS, HTML5. That's how the World Wide Web works. It uses these technologies to expose a document object model. And on Apple devices, all of this happens within WebKit. Every Apple device ships with a set of frameworks called WebKit for viewing internet content on an Apple device. And part of that WebKit is the core JavaScript framework that makes up this triumvirate. Now, what Omni has done is they have used the core JavaScript from WebKit to enable their applications to receive instructions from JavaScript scripts and perform actions and queries with their documents and their document elements. So they've taken the core JavaScript from WebKit expose the object model of their applications to that so that a user like yourself can write a script that goes through that architecture and controls their applications. Now this has a lot of implications as to, wow, this is gonna change the way that iOS can work. And let's take a look at that. So I wanna break it down to the simplest level. We're gonna start very low level so you can see how integrated this is. I'm gonna look at OmniGraffle on iOS, and OmniGraffle, for those who aren't aware of it, it's kind of a drawing program, but it's so much more. It does uh, incredible charting and graphics and text, it's just phenomenal. But I'm gonna draw out a little shape on the canvas area. And then I'm going to select that shape with a tap and I'm going to click the other arrow here on my options bar. And one of the options is copy as JavaScript. I'm going to copy that element as a JavaScript script and then delete the element from the page. So I selected the element, copied it, and said, give it to me as JavaScript code. Then the next step is I'm going to go to the top right here. You see this icon for a prompt. That's a new automation menu in Omni applications. It has an automation console. And within the console area, I can change the way the theme looks. It can be light or dark. I can change the font size very much like you know, working in a terminal or any other type of console. And when I tap in there, it becomes active. I'm gonna paste the script that was created into this field. This is the script that Omni Graffle uses to identify or recreate that object. And to prove that, I'm gonna tap the return button here to activate the script. I'm pretty good on right on. You can see the script runs, let's close the console and the shape comes back. So what this proves is that Omni has integrated core JavaScript and with the frameworks of their application and exposed the various objects. They can even recreate any object using JavaScript. Let's take a look at the next step. So when you have a document and you have an object that's on the document, one of the things that we all know as developers is that objects have properties, right? They have certain qualities that define them. For example, it could be a shape, it could be a stroke thickness, it could be a fill color, it could be a stroke color. And let me go back and show you how you can interact with the document using this technology to affect some of the properties. So I'm gonna go back launch the console again from the, the menu at the top. Launch the console, thank you. 
Okay, you can see that it's already, it keeps the script live during the, the time the document's open. So that variable, G1, that represents the created graphic, I can still use that. So I'm going to, uh, down here at the bottom, I'm going to use that variable to change some properties. So it'll be G1.shape, and then I'll go equal and give it a, a string circle for the name of the shape that I want to change it to. Then I'm going to uh, run it and then close this so you can see. So it communicates with the object in the document and I can change the value of one of the properties of that. Let's go and look at the other ones. So let's continue and change the other properties. I'm gonna still use the G1 uh, variable here. I'm gonna type into there and let's change some of the other properties. G1, let's do stroke thickness, and this will take an integer that represents a pixel value or a point value, actually, point value. Let's make that 12 points, and then I'm gonna change another property, G1 dot, and then the name of the property, fill color, and this will be an instance of a color class, color class dot RGB, I'm gonna make an RGB color, and to do that, it has four values, red, green, blue, and alpha, with zero being zero and one representing 100%. So I just indicated a red circle there. And then I'm going to change the stroke color, and I will use another instance of a color class, but this time I'm gonna use a shortcut where you can use the name of common colors, blue, like that. And now that I've done that, I can close the console. And you see I affected the element that was in the document. So this is very simple, but it, it proves that how this is integrated into the Omni app. That the document has elements, the elements have properties, there's an inheritance structure in there, there's, and it's all exposed through uh, core JavaScript and WebKit through a console architecture that you can do within any app. And that's really powerful because this opens the door for a lot of things. And just to prove to you that this is dual platform, I'm not gonna say cross platform, I'm gonna say dual platform, Mac OS and iOS, let's do the, finish up the second part here on Mac OS. So here I am in Mac OS, I've already created my circle, recreated that, and you can see I've already brought that back and changed it to circle, and now I'm gonna sit there in the console live in, in my Mac and do that. So the same exact script that I use on iOS is the same script that I'm gonna use on Mac OS. This is another big accomplishment. There's a universal scripting architecture now for the Apple platform and it's based upon JavaScript core. So you can see it's changing everything. Last thing to change is the stroke color. And we'll use our shortcut again, color.blue. Enter that and it changed interactively. Very powerful, opens the door for a lot of things. So we can see that on both Mac OS and iOS, Omni has created a way for you to use the uh, core JavaScript out of WebKit and control their apps and interact with their apps. So what I want to do is talk about the design of this architecture, how they've implemented it, how you can take advantage of it, and some of the examples of ways that it can interact with data that hasn't been done before on any platform but it's coming up and available now. The first thing we're gonna look at is how you store these scripts, how you can make them accessible to others and for yourself. And that's through actions and libraries. So here's, a, here's a, the little Omni automation script that uh, creates the shape and fills it and controls the fill color and the stroke color. You can see the first one is document.windows. 
uh, bracket zero, that means the front window. We're getting the selection class from that, and one of the properties off the selection class is canvas. Because in OmniGraffle you can have multiple canvases, this is how you get the current canvas, storing that reference in CNVS over there on the left, the variable. All the variables are in yellow on this, the classes are in, in red, and the properties are in blue. Then I'm creating a new rect, which is a, a dimension you're very familiar with. Then a fill color, I'm defining a couple colors. I create a shape, store the reference to the shape, and then using that reference, apply that to apply the uh, thickness and the fill colors there. So that's a simple, basic Omni um, automation script that we just saw in action. Now, you store those scripts as they're called actions. There's only so many words you can use in automation, and actions is one that gets used quite a bit. But Omni stores them into actions. You can think of them as scripts. And this is what an action looks like. This is the basic outline of an action. You have a couple components in the action, three components. The first is an instantiation of the action class, and you get passed in the, the selection automatically. The section is a, a second is a validation routine that you use to determine whether you want this script to be available or not. For example, are graphics selected in the document? If so, make this available. Otherwise, don't make it available. So that's your validation routine. And then you return the action object to the application so that this all loads into memory once it's instantiated. So here's an example of a validation. Do I have graphics selected? Uh, you can see that the function it has selection objects, so that means it's getting past the user selection automatically. Then I can say if the selection graphics length is greater than zero, return true, otherwise return false. So that will determine whether this is enabled in the action menu or not in the application. The other thing is, here I'm going to turn the fill color of any selected graphic to red, and so I I get past the selection object, I do a for each method on that, and with each item in that for each, I apply fill color to color red. So this is a simple action for coloring all the selected graphics red. That's what an action looks like code-wise. There's not a lot to it. You can get as complex as you'd like, or as you need to, but the basic structure is the same for that. So to help out your action, you want libraries. For example, you might have a, a series of actions and each one of them uses the same routine. And the best way to keep your actions smaller and editable and up to date is to put your routines into a library. A library is a JavaScript script that will be stored in the bundle as well. And that way your, your actions can call the library to have it perform any kind of functions. This is standard programming stuff. And this is what a library looks like. You have an instance here where you're declaring a new library class and then you just list the functions that are part of the library and then you return the library object to the application so that it can execute it. And then when you want to call a library, here I have a library called StencilLib, and I have a library called ShapeLib. I found that it's really useful for when I'm dealing with graphics. I have a library for images, I have a library for text, all my favorite little tricks and everything. I put them into a library, and then I use the identifier this, meaning this environment, this library, and I, then once I've identified the libraries, I can call any method in the libraries, like get stencil names, uh, shape with contents of array. So this, this action gets the name of all the stencils that are installed in, in OmniGraffle, makes a text box on the canvas listing all those names. And then so you have both of these components, action and libraries, that work really well together. And they are components of plugins. So a plugin houses all of these actions and all of these libraries into a single bundle that you can install or have a user install in their copy of Omni software. 
And for example, it has your, your libraries and all of your actions. It has localization files for strings. You can have toolbar icons so that your, your action can be on the toolbar. And if you have a new Mac, it can show up on the new Mac toolbar as well. And you can have extra things like uh, other images and data files that you use in your bundle you can store in there as well. And to install it, you just double click it on the Mac and it, it will say, do you want to install it? And on iOS, you can use Omnipresence, which is their updating software that keeps all of your devices running the same files and same Omni software. Or you can just uh, tap a web page like here on omniautomation.com where I can tap a link and then you'll see there's a, a little uh, uh, bundle called South Snippets. I'll say import with OmniGraffle. And then once I do that, it will open up in OmniGraffle, show me this dialog saying you're installing a plugin. Are, you know, this is very powerful. Are you aware of who you're installing it from? So this is something that the user approves and then it installs into the application. And then once it's in the application, I can do something with the plugin. Like I can select that and create an entire circle connected together using a command in my installed uh, Plugin. So here I click on the plugin. You can see all of the different actions I have in it, and one of them creates a circle of seven linked items. So that's the plugin architecture. It's really uh, comprehensive and it allows you to have actions and automation. But if you just want something lightweight, like you want to write a script, something that doesn't want to be, it doesn't need to be part of a bundle, you just want to execute. Uh, a script to make it available, you can write a solitary action. And it's just like another action, only you have some metadata in the top that identifies who the, who the author is, what the menu name is that you want to appear in the automation menu. The rest of it is, is the same. It's the same functionality as the action with the action code and the validation code and returning the action so that it gets executed at the end and called by the application. So this is the structure for creating just a simple type of script that you want to load. So here's an example. I, I have these uh, circles. I want to create a simple script. I use bbedit. There's my action, my solitary action. I drag it into the plugins folder. And then I select, see, look for the items on here. They're not selected, it's grayed out. I select the items, the confirmation validation routine runs. There they are, I select it and it changes the color. So installing and using this functionality is very easy. It uh, has a real standardized way that they've approached it through the whole plugin architecture. So you have the solitary actions, you have libraries, and this works on the same on both Mac OS and iOS. So it's a rich development environment. Now, developing automation for individual instance and use is one thing. That's very handy. It's always great to have a script that does something special. Like everybody that was in my session yesterday, they, I had them create a script that turns uh, a group of images into a presentation and reads it back to you. Who was here in the session yesterday? Y'all, what's that the coolest session? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I got approval. <laughs> so having those kind of scripts is great. That's an essential element of a, of a really robust app is extending that app so that your customers can use it in ways that you hadn't anticipated. Uh, perhaps combining features that you didn't really think about or didn't feel like that was worth the effort to put in as a feature. But the other thing about scripting is about communication between applications and getting transferring data between different sources and applications. That's where the power of automation really kicks in beyond just being a handy macro tool. So what Omni has done is something very special with the way that they communicate, and it's through this URL mechanism.
So have you ever noticed that you're in one app and you tap a link and another app opens up automatically? Right? Like I'll be on a web page and I tap a link and all of a sudden the Maps app will open up. Or have you ever been in iTunes on a web page and you tap a link and all of a sudden iTunes opens up? You got to get this guy's stuff. He's really good. You, you'll enjoy it. So the reason for that, and some apps have URLs built into them just so other developers can use those URLs to communicate with them. For example, in Photos, this is a URL for showing the last import album. So if you're a developer of an app, you can run this URL yourself, and all of a sudden, Photos will come forward and change. So just tapping that link will change the way that Photos works. So applications have implemented URLs throughout both of the operating systems. It's very common to see uh, URLs or universal resource locators that look something like this. So you can see it's like an opening with some data, okay, yeah, parameter value, parameter value, parameter value. Uh, here's another one. So this one points to this, and then it has an ID, okay. This is the one for photos that shows last import. This is one for the dictionary. So if you run that URL, it will actually look up the word automation for you. So on macOS and iOS, URLs are used quite a bit for communication. But there's an issue with them. So in the standard URL format that people are using now, they usually have URLs that have some kind of domain, and then they have parameter value, parameter value, parameter value, parameter value. And you have to know all the different parameters for each one of the apps, and you, there's no standardized thing, and you have to be able to fill out all of this stuff. But what Omni has done is changed that. So this is an Omni automation URL. There's one parameter, the encoded JavaScript. You see the green? That is the Omni script encoded into a URL. So for example, here's our favorite little circle creation script, right? Well, what we're going to do is use some standard part of JavaScript core. There's a function called encode URI component for encoding strings into URLs. There's also a decode if you ever need that. And it, it encodes special characters. And then we're going to do a split join to get extra things like periods and uh, exclamation points that are OK in a URL, but they don't break nice. And we like having them done, too. So we're going to put both of those things together. And we're going to begin our URL with the name of the Omni app we're targeting, like Omni Outline or Omni Graffle. And then either three slashes for localhost or just put in localhost like that. So three slashes can equal localhost. Omni JS dash run uh, question mark parameter script equals. And then the script goes after that. So here's a routine for encoding. It's very straight ahead. Uh, it takes the app name and the script text. You'll notice that on line two, uh, it takes the app name and makes it lowercase. Then on line three, it concatenates that to the rest of the URL. Then it encodes the, the script test that's patched to it, does a split join to get the remaining characters, and then returns the URL opening with the encoded text. So this returns an encoded Omni Outliner script. So this, going through this routine, turns into that. Now you're looking at it going, wow. But if we actually colorize this, you can see that all the components of the script are still in there. It's just the punctuation and, and other characters that are not. So this is a valid URL. This URL, when I take that URL and I tap it, or execute it, it turns into a command to create a circle in OmniGraffle. Oh, let's take a look at an example of how this works. So here's a company, Airtable. Airtable has online databases that you can represent as table data. 
or in a variety of ways. And what I'm going to show you in this video is how the data from an Airtable database on the internet can interact live with an OmniGraphle document back and forth. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag out a shape for a picture. And then I'm going to uh, switch to Airtable. This is my database in, uh, uh, I'm going to switch it to grid mode so I can zoom through it. There's the little pig bank. I'm going to select that, scroll up. You'll see there's a link right there. I'm going to tap that link and say open in OmniGraffle. There's the script that it wants to run. It just now tagged the box with the, re the record ID and the database name. I'm going to run an action from a plugin. It goes back up, communicates, grabs in all the other metadata, pulls it down, and imports the image. Then, with that image selected, I'm going to run another script that will extract the notes and place it below or to the right to that image. So, I just connected to a database in the cloud, pulled down an image, imported it, tagged that container, brought down the metadata, communicated back and forth, and brought the information right to my document. Okay, how did this happen? Well, so here is the script for tagging the selected graphic. This is what got operated on and when I tap that link in the, the Airtable database, the thing to notice is these placeholders, like Z, 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 X, 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 X. I put placeholders in where the data is going to be, where the record ID is and the database name. And then in the script in Airtable, I open it up and put in their generator for a record ID. So here's the Omni automation script but at this point, Airtable is going to insert the record ID, and that's a clickable link to them. So that goes into their database. And that means that when I want to execute that, I just, let's go to our little pig here. Okay, there's the pig guy coming over here. Okay, then we click the link. Then what happens once I click the link is that that information comes down and is tagged into the metadata structure in Omni, uh, OmniGraffle. So a data key called Airtable DB name, there's the name of the database, AT Airtable record ID, there's the record ID. Then what happens next is here is the uh, code for going back to Airtable. So Airtable has a URL structure that's done with a curl. And you'll notice that on line three, I create the URL from string by adding in the record ID and the database name and my API key. And then I execute that with a fetch. So that's doing a curl. Go grab all the data, pulls it down in JSON, parse the data, and then it also has an image URL as one of the components. I take the image URL, do a fetch uh, asynchronously with that, and then once it's gotten the image data, I add that data to the graphic in the document. And the binding just makes it independent. So that's the code that I run from OmniGraffle. So here's what it looks like on the Mac. Same thing, I'm going to draw this out. And then once I've done that, I have a split screen here. Watch the data, watch the metadata area over here. Watch this metadata area. So I'm going to scroll up and find my, uh, Airtable has wonderful design that really, that you can make your stuff look great. And let's pull this guy in here, I'm going to click it. Then there's my link. Hit the link, do you want to import this? Vop, you notice that it just got tagged. So there's, there's Airtable executing on OmniGraffle. Then I go to OmniGraffle, I go to my automation menu, I have a plugin, I say, hey, update selected graphic. It's an Airtable plugin I created, and then when I run that, it goes and gets the remaining data, imports the image, and if we look here at the metadata, you can see it got all the notes and this stuff there, and then I can run another convenient script that I created that extracts the notes from the metadata and inserts it either to the right or below or wherever I want on this. 
That is incredibly powerful. That's different than anything we've done before with URLs. And the other thing to note is this is approved and it's shipping in the Apple Store. You can buy OmniGraffle that does this right now, and Airtable supports the Omni URL structure. So this is real. And that's linkable cloud data. Now, this opens the door for another concept. Here's a related idea for you I'll throw at you. Everybody uses HTML constantly. We're using it to get our information. We even use it for your documentation. How many of you as developers document your apps using HTML? Just about everybody does. And it's a great way to get information. Wouldn't it be nice if that HTML suddenly would interact with your document so that the user who had a question could just tap it and something would happen? Because Omni automation is based upon core JavaScript that's part of the HTML triumvirate, you can do amazing things with it. For example, you can have script links that execute Omni URLs. So you have an HTML link, looks like this, right? And then you fill this in with your Omni URL. And then when you tap that, it executes the Omni script. So in a basic form, here's what that would look like. So I have a shape selected, I swipe open, I have a script on a, a web page, I tap the run, it comes over here, shows me the script, I approve it, and it goes. So there's a simple example of HTML interacting with a document. I can have helper scripts, documentation and helper scripts right there on my website. An another way of that is here's the same idea, but I'm going to copy this, the URL from the web page. Once I've copied it, I'm going to go to, to OmniGraph. I'm going to select the object, go to the properties inspector over here, and I can choose to have that object open a URL when it's selected with the browse tool. So I paste my Omni URL script into there. I select the object. I get the browse tool, and I tap it. And I select the object, get the browse tool, and tap it. Select the object, and then get the browse tool, and tap it. Because each one of those objects, as it's replicated, is inheriting that same script. So now, all of a sudden, I've created an incredible tool in OmniGraffle for doing complex design shapes and, and formula. All this came from I went to a web page, copied the script URL, pasted it into my uh, OmniGraffle document, and I was able to go in seconds and create this complex object for you automatically. Whoa, didn't think about HTML that way. How about this way? Here's a simple way. I need to make a process so simple that all my staff can do it. I need to make a process so simple that all my staff can do it. Everybody's going, oh yeah, I've been there. I know what that's like. Here's an HTML form. So it has a fill color, it has a stroke color, and shape. What I want the user to do is be able to exercise that, and let's have this go. So here I am on a Mac split screen. I'm going to go up to choose that. I'll choose a color, blue. I'll choose a stroke color, green. I'll tap a shape, star. Do you want to open this in OmniGraffle? Yes. Allow that. Voila. I just made a shape from an HTML form. Let's go back and do that again. Red, uh, yellow. Uh, give me a diamond. Tap the diamond. Choose allow. There it is over there. Now, you, for the first time, you have a level of interactivity between data formats that target directly your application. It's a simple example, but it's incredibly powerful. And here's how it's done. So here's the script at the top for creating the shape. At the bottom, this script has been genericized by putting placeholders in green in where you have the color information and the shape, right? 
So what we do is in the HTML form, it looks like this. So this goes through our encoding, turns into an Omni URL, but the placeholders are still there. Then on my HTML, you'll notice that there's the value of my pop-ups is either the shortcut name or the RGB values. Those are the generated values that in the HTML that you get. And for my shapes, each one of my shapes will execute on tapping, add graphic, and then the name, and the value is the name of the shape, right? Very good. And then what happens is this. They tap that, it executes this, this routine in the web page called add graphic. It passes in the data type, which is the string for star. Then the script goes and gets the current value of both of the pop-ups to determine the colors, right? Get element by ID, stroke color, menu, value, typical stuff. Then down here, we replace the placeholders in the Omni script, which is on line two, right there, with the values that we've extracted out of the form. We put the two together, there's our OmniGraphle opening part of the URL, and then the script code, and then we just tell HTML window location equals script URL, and it executes. And that's how that is possible that you can just fill out a form on a web page, select a value, and then have that value create an object in a document. Semi-interesting? We're on to something here? Hang on, it's gonna get a little bit better, a little bit more interesting as we go along. But what you're seeing now are, are doors being opened. And that's what I see as I'm starting to surf the wave and I can feel the power of the wave beneath my feet. I can see where this is going. Data transfer, this is a, a big one. So here's a table, a web page that has tables about uh, state taxes in the United States as a percentage of federal revenue, blah, 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 boring data, right? But the interesting thing about this is, first of all, I've provided a link for a document. If the user wants to use the data in these tables, they can download the OmniGraphle document, or they can tap a link and it will insert a map of the United States in their document for them. And then over here, if I tap the icon on the table, all the table data will be extracted and color mapped onto the shapes in the OmniGraphle document. Whoa, okay, let's try this out. So I click this, it adds a map of the United States to my document, and each one of the states are identified and color coded. Then I'm going to add the data from this table, and it will go over and colorize the map based upon the state and the values. Then to show you that it can change, I'll go to another table and colorize it again. So now I have data mapping with objects in a document. Data mapping from HTML with documents in an object, and it works like this. You have a row, you have a state, you have a value. And here's the HTML. Here's the row, TR, name is AL, Alabama. The, you have the state and you have a value. Then this is the button up there. And you'll notice that the uh, function of the, the, of the button has the same ID as the table that it's drawing from. That's how it identifies it. And that same data is up here in a div that's hidden display that contains all of the code that we need with a placeholder. So the HTML table data is converted to JSON with the standard HTML function that basically extracts the cells out of the table and makes a, an object record. It pulls out something that looks like this, right? So notice that your ID is Alabama, AL is the postal code, that's your unique identifier. 
And then here's how you apply that data to the graphics. There's a placeholder that gets changed and filled with that JSON, and then down here you find the particular graphic with the ID that's passed to it that matches the data. And then this will, is the master routine that applies all of that. This is in the web page itself. It gets the table data. It encodes the URI component from the table data. It creates the script, gets the script, uh, it's the inner HTML, then it, it replaces the placeholder with the JSON, puts the two components of the script together into a single URL, and then says window location execute URL. That lives in the web page, and that's what makes that possible, so that you can just enter the, the uh, information and pass it. And the reason why it works is that each of the objects by default is named the postal code. So that postal code is used to identify the row. Little creative ideas here on how you can take data and use it on iOS and macOS in entirely different ways than they had planned before. Here's, here's one more example of this HTML stuff, just to give you the full picture of what's possible. This is one of those catalog things, right? I got all of my catalog stuff, these are the SKU numbers for each one of my products. And I want to build like a catalog using data from this web page. So there's two buttons to pay attention to, place notes and import images. And what I'm going to do then is we're going to take this page and let's take that page and extract the data from that page and use it. So here we are on iOS, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make sure I got the page open, so I have a page open. Then I'm going to take my boxes. I want these to be filled out with particular objects, and I'm going to select an object, pull out my thing, and then tap the picture of what I want to go in there. Then it runs, it, it tags this box with the unique identifier SKU number from the other thing. I'll tap that one, pull out the next one, tap the data source that I want to go in there. You can see that it's telling you everything that's going to be doing. I'll tap the last one. And I'll pick up one of these, and you'll see SKU. You want the SKU? Yep, that's the one. Open in OmniGraffle. Here's the script. Run that. OK. Now that I've done that, I got all three of these selected, I want to place the notes. So extract the notes out of the web page, put them to the right of the shapes, okay, to the right, very good, Flip. okay, that's the information, now import the images. So I'll tap the button up there, execute, and voila, it downloads the images. So I just created a catalog page by tapping links on a web page. I didn't even have to have the scripts that control OmniGraffle in OmniGraffle. I could just have them on the web page for my staff to use. The potential here and the power here is just unbelievable. And this is what it looks like. This is the HTML where you have individual divs that contain the information and the descriptions. They have SKU numbers and here's the actual uh, these are the images that are tappable images, and they're all related because they have SKUs. And it's just the same kind of formula again, where you're linking data to objects within HTML. And I'll run past this just so we have to do that. Now, that's between a, a web page and the document. But what about between applications? How do you get data from one application to another that that application can then respond to and have that data used. Well, using Omni URLs, you can do this. So we've seen that you can have a script in OmniGraffle that executes on OmniGraffle. But what about if you have data in another application that you want to use in your application like OmniGraffle? So they have uh, an architecture built in called call and response. So instead of making callback URLs or anything, what you can do is have a script 
that runs another script targeting the application, gets the result of that, brings it back to your main script, and then your main script can use that data to create whatever it needs to do. So for, in this example, I'm going to go to Omni Outliner, grab the outline of a presentation, take it back into OmniGraffle and turn it into a presentation. So to get the data out of Omni Outliner, this is the function. It's basically I'm iterating each one of the items in the outline. I'm extracting two or three properties and putting it into an object. I'm creating JSON. And it looks like this when it's done being created. Then what I'm doing is creating an Omni URL with that code. So there's my function name. I'm going to string. So I have the function declared. I turn it to string, do tell script off the URL class right there. And I put in Omni Outliner, get the script, and then I have a line that actually calls the function. And it looks like this when it's done. So I take this, and then that gets used to call the other application. And here it is, where I'm, uh, first line, you can see there's a script URL, call it, and then when the reply comes back, I can parse the reply, get the data back, and then I can do whatever I want to do with that. So there it is, the reply comes back, and then I can parse it. So I get the data back from Omni Outliner live, and then I can do whatever I want, is what it amounts to. So here's what it looks like. I'm in Omni Outliner. This is the outline that I want to turn into a presentation. Okay, so I switch over to Omni Graffle. I'm going to run a script, first of all, to size my canvas so that it's like a slide. I'm going to make it 1024 by 768. So here's a script that just works locally on the application. Then I want to turn this into a title slide. So I'll run another script I have for just turning uh, canvases into slides, and there's my slide title. And now I can tap that and change that to whatever I want to be. So we'll call it Workflow Designs. Okay, so that's my slide size and, and the type of slide I want. Now I can run another script that's going to go to Outliner and grab all the data. Do I want the top, every topic and its child or just the topics? I want topic and children. So it's going to go over here. There's the routine for grabbing the JSON. Grabbed all the JSON, came back, and it made slides for each one of those. So I just turned an outline in Omni Outliner in iOS into a presentation, slide presentation. Then I'm going to tap one of the slides. It selects the originator back in Omni Outliner. Then I'm going to edit this here. I'm going to add another row. And then I'm going to edit the title of that particular slide. So let's add in and format. Okay, now I'm going to select the, uh, the row here in Outliner. I'm going to switch back to Omni, Omni Graffle. And then uh, I'm just going to run the thing. It says update import parent outline item. Yes, continue. So I update it. It goes back. It extracts the data from the updated item, comes back. I can just tap this to refresh, and there's the information. So I've created links between applications that I can dynamically use to transfer and update information. Whoa. Wow, that's a lot to throw at you. Here's one that's a simpler concept. So how many of you are using the Workflow app on iOS? Apple bought it, it's free, they're supporting it, they're improving it. I highly recommend you start using this app. It's like Automator on iOS. And one of the interesting things about it is it works with Omni, Omni Automation as well. Here's a simple example. Here's a workflow in Workflow app. And I'll walk you through it. It looks like this, so the first thing I'm gonna do is select a contact. And what that will do is it'll bring up a view of my address book. I want to be able to select somebody from the address book. Then I want to create a JSON dictionary using 
the information from that contact. I want their first name, last name, street address, and prefix, and have that be assigned to these particular keys in the JSON object. Then I want to encode the JSON object. Then I have the variable that is called encoded data will be all of that encoded JSON. I have my Omni script pasted into a URL with a placeholder in it, and then I want to replace the text in the, in the place in the URL with the encoded data right there, and then open that URL. So I'm going to save this uh, to my desktop. You can have this be uh, an action if you want. There's a variety of ways you can implement workflows, but I have it right here on the desktop. So anytime I want to create a business letter, I just tap it. It brings up my address book. I tap somebody from the address book. Here's the script that's going to run on OmniGraffle. It instantly creates a canvas that's the size of a US letter fills it out with the appropriate addresses and information from the recipient and from me, and then I can just paste in whatever I want or type in whatever I want. And I instantly have a, a, a business letter just by tapping and accepting somebody from an, my address book, all because of the ability for workflow to support this concept that Omni's doing. So to review, what you've seen today about Omni Automation, what they're doing. It's based on JavaScript core that ships with WebKit, and it allows you to communicate to their apps on both uh, Mac OS and iOS. We've seen that you can run scripts from a console, and we've seen that you can have plugins that contain multiple scripts or single scripts as well that are available from uh, the automation menu and, and the various applications. We've seen that it can work with HTML links and forms so that user selections on HTML pages can actually affect actions in documents. Here we've seen that it works with cloud data so that you can communicate with uh, uh, cloud data sources and have it actually do stuff. We've seen that it works with the workflow app and we've also seen that it does app-to-app -app communication by running a script on another app, bringing back the results, and then using that in a host script to generate data. That's incredibly powerful stuff. Now, what does this mean for you as a developer? Well, when I started today, I talked about, I'm showing you this from the viewpoint of a developer, from Omni. These guys are motivated, they have insight, and they have talent. And what they're doing is they're directing the course of things just by the sheer power of the ideas that they're presenting. And it shows what a developer can do. I fully expect that other developers like yourself are going to look at what's going on here and go, I want some of that. I want to be able to take advantage of that. I want to have that level of productivity in my applications. I want to be able to interact with other applications in these creative ways on a mobile device. And I think that over the next couple of years, that's going to become a reality. And you're going to see more and more of this. Like I said, I like to paddle out to where I think the wave's going to be and then surf the wave. And right now I can feel the wave riding beneath my feet. And I think you're going to be part of this whole experience too. So thank you so much for letting me come here to Melbourne and being part of your experience. Thank you very much.